the war is over except it's not not by a long shot an uneasy silence hangs over israel and iran the fragile ceasefire could crumble at any second sirens could blare again missiles might streak across the sky again and western powers could again scramble to prevent Tehran from going nuclear. Headlines would explode, warning of uranium as suddenly the most dangerous rock on earth again. But here's the radioactive truth they won't share with you. The purest uranium ever discovered was found in Africa, in the central African country of Gabon. A geological fluke so precise, so advanced, it astonished scientists worldwide. A natural nuclear reactor, deep underground, that once ran self-sustaining nuclear fission over two billion years ago, creating the world's only known natural nuclear reactors. But when scientists uncovered this marvel a few years after Gabon declared independence, it was France, not Gabon, that celebrated. Paris immediately secured the country's uranium, quietly mining and exporting it to its shores. And while France used it to light its cities and fuel its nuclear arsenal with Gabon's riches, Gabon itself remained in the dark, literally and figuratively. This tiny country never benefited from its geological treasure. Instead, the continent continues to export the uranium that fuels the very nation deciding who can and can't go nuclear. Today, while global powers debate nuclear ambitions, Hundreds of millions of Africans still live without reliable electricity, sitting directly atop the resource at the heart of these global tensions. In this video, let's explore the story of the world's oldest nuclear reactor and why it was never allowed to power Africa. In 1972, deep in southeastern Gabon, French scientists stumbled upon a mystery that defied the laws of physics, at least as they understood them. They were routinely importing uranium to France for their growing nuclear program, but when testing samples from the remote Oklo mine, something strange emerged. The uranium ore contained significantly less U-235, the critical isotope required for nuclear fission, than natural uranium typically holds. Natural uranium consistently has around 0.72 U-235, but the Oklo samples showed drastically lower levels. It seemed impossible. Had someone secretly used it already? Initial suspicion pointed to a mistake. Maybe the samples had been contaminated. But further analysis revealed something astonishing. The uranium had indeed undergone fission but naturally without any human involvement. It was a reactor, a nuclear reactor, built by nature around 1.7 to 2 billion years ago. The perfect conditions had miraculously aligned beneath the Earth's crust. The natural uranium ore had enough U-235, the surrounding rocks had water acting as a moderator and the setup was just perfect for sustained fission. This natural reactor operated with stunning precision. For roughly one million years, it cycled on and off rhythmically. 30 minutes of intense nuclear fission followed by a cooling off period as the water evaporated. Then it would start up again, over and over, flawlessly self-regulating. No human oversight, no computers, no complex technology, only nature's intricate chemistry at play. Today, scientists say that Oklo functioned like a modern-day nuclear reactor, complete with waste containment and self-regulation. In total, scientists discovered 17 of these extraordinary natural reactors around Oklo, each capable of generating energy comparable to a small power station, about 100 kilowatts, enough to power a thousand homes if it had been harnessed. Beyond a geological miracle, it proved something monumental. Nuclear fission can occur naturally under the right conditions. In fact, this is the only known place on Earth where this has ever happened. 
but here lies the painful irony. While the global scientific community marveled at Oklo's geological wonder, few Gabonese were ever involved or even informed. French companies mined and shipped the precious uranium to Paris, fueling France's nuclear reactors and potentially even its atomic weapons. Today, despite hosting Earth's only known natural nuclear reactors, Gabon still does not have a single nuclear power plant. Not one. While Gabonese cities remain energy poor, Paris thrives, illuminated by the uranium taken from Gabon soil. Oklo wasn't just a geological phenomenon, it was the blueprint for nuclear energy's possibilities. Yet it has come to symbolize how Africa's unparalleled resources remain unexploited locally even as they power prosperity elsewhere. The country remains energy poor without energy sovereignty to this day. If nature gave Gabon nuclear power 2 billion years ago, why is Africa still considered unready today? The West often frames Africa's nuclear ambitions as dangerous or premature. Yet beneath the rhetoric of non-proliferation lies a deeper truth. African energy independence threatens global power dynamics. Consider this. African nations face heavy pressure to sign restrictive treaties, such as the Treaty of Pelindaba, prohibiting nuclear development and infrastructure. Until June 2025, the World Bank and other development banks actively banned financing nuclear energy projects in Africa, limiting the continent's nuclear growth. South Africa, once nuclear armed, dismantled its weapons under immense international pressure during the transition from apartheid. But Africa's uranium powers the world. As of 2012, African mines in Niger, Gabon, Namibia, South Africa, DR Congo and Madagascar supplied up to 50% of global uranium for reactors. Niger alone provides around 20% of France's nuclear fuel, while African communities near uranium mines suffer health crises, water shortages and environmental damage. This isn't limited to France. The US built its atomic bombs using Congolese uranium during the Manhattan Project. China, Russia and other UN security partners joined the fray with new flags and better PR. Yet, Western narratives portray any African effort toward nuclear autonomy as a threat rather than a path to sustainable development. The unspoken rule is clear. Africa's uranium is acceptable in Western reactors and arsenals, but not in African power plants. The continent's nuclear potential is clear. South Africa operates the Koabag nuclear reactor and has nuclear research institutions. Nigeria is exploring small modular reactors and Ghana maintains a research reactor. The African Union proposed the African Nuclear Energy Commission to facilitate peaceful nuclear advancement. However, every attempt toward nuclear sovereignty encounters financial, diplomatic and political barriers, precisely from nations dependent on Africa's uranium exports. Nuclear infrastructure is costly and international pressures steer Africa towards overpriced renewable solutions and sustainable for robust industrial growth, while uranium leaves Africa raw and undervalued. Let that sink in. Africa produces over 18 to 50 percent of global uranium, yet over 600 million Africans remain without reliable electricity. Today, as global tensions flare again over nuclear ambitions, uranium is back on the spotlight. Yet in Africa, the land with some of the richest uranium reserves, the lights remain off. Across sub-Saharan Africa, barely 45% of households have reliable electricity and load-shedding, daily outages that can last 6 to 8 hours, cripples industries from Lagos to Johannesburg. 
these countries are forced to rely on diesel generators or imports at three times the cost of nuclear power, stalling growth and deepening energy poverty. When France discovered Gabon's Oclos natural nuclear reactors, it saw far more than a scientific curiosity. The site, quickly controlled by Comouf, a French company backed by Paris, solidifying France's neocolonial grip known as France Afrique. By the time scientists revealed Oclo's secrets, France had been extracting Gabonese uranium for two decades, using it along uranium from Niger to power itself. Thanks to African uranium, France emerged as the fourth global nuclear power. At the end of the day, Gabon's uranium legacy symbolizes Africa's paradox. Immense wealth that transforms the globe, yet minimal power over its own destiny. But the winds are changing. New African leaders like Ibrahim Traore in Burkina Faso, Asimi Goita in Mali, and Abdurimane Chiani in Niger are reclaiming sovereignty and rewriting the rules. The critical question now isn't whether Africa can harness nuclear power, but whether the world is ready for a truly independent Africa. As global tensions rise, Africa once again stands at historical crossroads. Will its uranium fuel foreign conflicts or ignite prosperity at home? Perhaps Oklo's greatest lesson is geopolitical. Whoever controls Africa's uranium controls its future and maybe just maybe, it's time Africa controlled both. This episode was brought to you by our fans on Patreon at patreon.com slash reasonafrica. That's patreon.com slash reasonafrica. Stay curious and as always, I'll see you next time. <laughs>